Hey fellow dadpreneurs, Adam Dukes here, and in this video I'm going to share with you my past business failures. I uh, Yesterday I stumbled upon a video about a guy, he made a, uh, he had a video about his past business failures, and I think I've seen it, it reminded me of a couple other videos I've seen, and uh, I was like, you know what, that's a good idea. It's 2019 right now, I got my start in October of 2010. So next month will be ten or nine years in the online marketing entrepreneur space, and I have had a lot of failures, um, a ton of failures. Before we get to that, real quick, I got my Dad Life shirt on. You can order your own Dad Life shirt. Click the link down below, totaldads.com, but do it after this video. Wait a few minutes, do it after this video. Although now that I say that, if I'm going to talk about my business failures, this might be the longest running video on YouTube. It might go a long time. No, I'm just kidding. Like I said, I got eight uh, business failures that I'm going to kind of... Uh, uh, read off, read off, and share, uh, share, share what I learned, the mistakes I made. I'm, I'm not going to go into each one, uh, but but kind of an overall thing: what I learned, what to do, and what not to do to help you avoid, like I talked about before, the mountains of mistakes I've made over the last almost nine years now. So the first one, when I got started, October 2010, um, I started cold calling local Las Vegas businesses. I told this story on Twitter the other day. Some people didn't believe me. It's honest to God, the truth. Um, my web, uh, my company, my first company was AMD Web Services. My name's Adam Michael Dukes, so it's AMD Web Services. Ashton and Ava both have the same initials. Uh, wasn't too create, creative back in 2010, as you can tell. But anyways, I got my start cold calling local businesses, and I cold called 5,000 Las Vegas businesses. No joke. I was using a, a dialer. I had one of those like douchebag uh, Bluetooth things back in the day because it was easy, easier than holding the phone to my ear and I would get up and walk around. I found walking around in my office uh, just helped, um, I don't know, helped with uh, my voice. Uh, it just kind of helped. I just kind of paced back and forth, literally just kind of in circles and that. And I cold called like three to 400 businesses a day, typically. Um, and with a dialer, what you can do, you connect it. I used call fire. Um, you connect to the, and you could sit like next and it just dials. So I don't have to like manually dial. That's what a dialer does. That's why I was able to call 300 or to 400 businesses a day. Uh, no joke, I'd take a shot of vodka and or whiskey. I think it was vodka. It might have been whiskey. Um, not every day. Um, some days turned into two or three shots of vodka to calm the nerves. I had never cold called before in my life. I had bought an ebook off the Warrior Forum uh, probably in September or October that year on how to cold call and just kind of followed that ebook. And I was calling every Lo Las Vegas business. Uh, I, I didn't have a niche and I was trying to sell websites. I think I was pricing them around $500. Again, I bought another course off the Warrior Forum showing um, the opportunity to sell uh, WordPress websites. Now, I am self-taught uh, all on YouTube videos on WordPress. Uh, that's how I've learned web design. Now, I'm not a web designer by any means. I can do some of the stuff. Um, not a designer, though, but um, that was what I was going to offer. I was going to do the work myself. I didn't understand the whole power, uh, the concept of outsourcing at the time. So, Anyways, I called about 5,000 businesses. From what I remember, I've looked in the call fire stats. I can still log into my account and see all the numbers. I, I think I connected with about 1,600 uh, businesses, like actually talked to them. I think I left 600 or 800 voicemails. And then the rest were either bad numbers, uh, no answer, um, busy signal maybe it was. Uh, there was a lot of bad numbers. I bought, I think, a list of local business owners online probably somewhere and just kind of uploaded it in a call fire, put the Bluetooth in, and just plugged away. After all of that, I think it was about six weeks. Um, I started, I think, in November. I, I, I remember I started the company. It was the end of October. I bought the domain, so I was officially in business. That's what I thought, at least. Um, so I started calling November. It was around the holidays, so I, it wasn't, I wasn't calling every day. Uh, and, and I've gone into 2011. After 5,000 businesses, I sold two websites, both uh, or each of them at $297 each. Now, obviously, that's no way to make a living. I was collecting unemployment still at the time because I got laid off in at the end of 2009. Um, so I had some money coming in. Um, to, to live, to eat, to fund my bar tab, my gambling tab. Um, well, some of my gambling tab. Um, but anyways, I, I probably negotiated down to two ninety seven. Uh, I'm sure I probably quoted five or six hundred dollars for the website. They said, "Well, uh, how about three hundred? And I said, "Deal." Uh, that was how good my negotiating skills were back then. It was absolutely brutal. The whole cold calling experience on February fourteenth, Valentine's Day, two thousand eleven. What I said, I'm never cold calling again. I, I never cold called till this to this day. I was like, I gotta find a better way. 
So I did cold emailing. Uh, I did some direct mail, like lumpy mail, um, where you put like I would a lot of times I would put dice in the mail. You put it like in the envelope, um, so it appears there's something in the mail. So they're intrigued, they're curious, so they open up. A lot of times I played the Vegas uh, theme and put like two pairs of dice, and I'd say, uh, "Don't gamble, uh, or don't throw the dice on your online marketing, or don't throw the dice on your SEO, or don't throw the dice on your web design, or whatever it was, something along those lines." I played off that because the dice are really cheap to do. Um, but anyways, like I said, I sold two websites. One was to a carpet uh, cleaner, um, and the other one was to a private investigator. Uh, kind of random. Like I said, I didn't have a niche. I was calling every single business owner. It didn't matter. If they said no or they weren't interested, I got off the phone with them right away. Again, I had like no objection handling. It was horrible. Uh, however, looking back at it, I'm thankful I went through the pain, <laughs> the brutality of it all, is because it helped me develop thick skin, which I quickly learned that is much needed in this business or being an entrepreneur or life in general, I guess I could say, is thick skin. So that was the first business AMD web services I went with that one uh, I still have a bank account actually in that one that's kind of like the legal one um, or yeah the legal one I guess I should say because uh, uh, the bank account um, and I kind of switched up my offerings, the web design and things like that. So technically, the website I let go years ago. Probably shouldn't have. I uh, probably should have kept it, but I I just let it go. I had a bunch of content on there. Uh, the next one in about 2012, I think it was, I actually wrote a book. They Said What? You can see my uh, face right there on the book uh, and then my name right down here. And uh, it says, uh, Adam Dukes lives in Las Vegas, Nevada, about $500 from the Strip. He lives with his curious cat, a backyard the size of a small ba sandbox in his dreams of Hollywood someday. So I, I just read that. I haven't read that in, it's been years. But anyways, I launched this book and Social Synergy is right here on the back. Um, I, um, the Social Synergy was going to be like reputation management, brand management. I was kind of re-pivoting or re, uh, yeah, re Repivoting, I guess. Still doing like a online marketing, just offering like reputation management in with the launch of the book. Social Synergy, I love that name. I'm a sucker for, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, um, alliteration. So S and S, Social Synergy. I went to buy the domain. It was it was taken, and I was so bummed out because I was so stuck on that name. I called my buddy Harry out here in Vegas within about 10 seconds. He had a solution, and he says, hey, we live in Sin City. Why not spell it S-I-N-E-R-G-Y? I was like, fucking brilliant. So so that's what I did. That website is actually still live and running today, socialsynergy.com. I have an email address that I still use with that one as well. Um, that one, like I said, reputation management, brand management, that was kind of the flavor of the month or so in 2012. So I did that for a little bit. Didn't really have a niche, kind of helped like a, a, couple of a couple of attorneys out, I think a dentist or two, kind of getting them more reviews on Google, getting some of the stuff buried, stuff like that. I didn't really enjoy it. It was kind of a shady um it was kind of a shady business. It, it felt kind of shady. I worked with an attorney, and um, I was bearing some negative things about his company, about himself. And then I started believing some of the things I found, and I was like, I want to help this guy out. So it was kind of a weird thing that I uh, messed with my head, and I kind of got away from that with the whole reputation brand management type thing. So like I said, that was in 2012. Uh, I ended up changing. Um, I ended up uh, started working with uh, real estate agents in social synergy today is still like a real estate marketing blog. I haven't published a blog post probably since 2016, maybe 2015. Uh, but I helped real estate agents uh, generate leads online. And then I niched down to real estate agents uh, running Facebook advertising. Then I went even deeper and I went like male Kelly Williams agents. Um, Facebook ads. Um, it got really niched down. So I did that till about the beginning of 2015. Uh, I bought a course on Amazon FBA. That was really, really hot. What you do is you, you basically find a product from China, you ship it, you put your logo on it, you ship it to Amazon, Amazon sells it for you, you leverage the traffic and their website presence and trust and all that. Um, a lot of people still have, are very successful with that. I have a friend here that lives in Vegas. She does excellent with it. She's been doing it like three or four years. Uh, sells like jewelry and she does amazingly well at it. Um, I sold these things. <laughs> these are called kendamas. And once again, I went with the um, alliteration. I called it crazy kendama. K and K, of course. Um, you can Google it. I think they're still on Amazon. I don't think the listing's live or anything, but it did not do nearly what the thousand dollar course told me it was going to do. It sounded, um, it was a lot of work. I uh, didn't like it. I threw in the towel about three months in, um, and I still have like 10 or 12 of these still in my closet. Tried to sell them on, I've tried to sell them on uh, eBay. I've tried to sell them on 
Facebook Marketplace offer up. Uh, I've never been able to sell one. Uh, it was a hot, hot craze back in 2015. I think I caught it on the downtrend, you know, and it just uh, it just died out. It's toys that kids play with in that, or they used to. Um, I did sell some on Amazon. I probably sold 50 or 60, but it took a long time. And my friend who lives out here, I just talked about, she started telling me about Shopify. This was in probably June of, actually it was probably May of 2015. I told her, Stephanie, I can't. I'm focused on crazy kendamas. I bought this Amazon course. I spent a shit ton of money on inventory. I'm not focused on Shopify, you know. Three months in, I'm about to start making some money. You know, you have to give all this stuff out on Amazon to game it, to get reviews, and you sell it for a dollar and blah, blah, blah. And so she kept asking me, and finally in like mid June, um, she kept asking about Shopify. So I said, No, I haven't heard of it. I'm kind of busy with this, but I'll give it a try. I bought the domain on a Thursday around lunchtime. Snazzy Silver was the uh, was the was the website was the Shopify store. Once again, alliteration and. I sold, uh, I made a sale, uh, Friday morning I woke up and had a sale. So less than 24 hours from even starting the Shopify store, I had a sale. I was hooked. It was like a drug. It was so awesome. I was running Facebook advertising. I was drop shipping, ordering the product from China. <laughs> I have probably 250 pieces still of this jewelry um, in my in my closet from 2015, 2016. Uh, a huge box of it. Um, I was drop shipping, so I wasn't ordering anything, wasn't spending any money, was using Facebook advertising, but they kind of let you float the money, so it was literally no money out of my pocket. Shopify was free, and I made a sale. With Amazon, it was like three months before I even made a sale, and it wasn't profit because you kind of have to give these things away for like a dollar to game the system to get reviews to friends and family. So the Shopify thing was pretty cool. And so I did, uh, I think I did a sale like two days later. I was spending five bucks a day on Facebook and all of a sudden things were, I was making not consistent sales, but I was making some sales. And again, I wasn't touching the inventory. I never saw the inventory. Um, it was pretty cool. So the first month I did about $250 in June. Uh, in July, I did like 2300 or 2200 which was pretty cool. I was like, wow, this is really cool like way more money than I've made with Amazon and I've been doing the Amazon thing for three plus months so at the end of July I told and I was still doing client work I was still I still had some real estate agents so once again uh, like a typical digital entrepreneur I'm trying to juggle way too many balls I ended up going I told myself the end of July I'm going all in with snazzy silver I stopped doing the cold kendama thing I haven't touched it since Uh, I stopped taking on clients stopped looking for clients I think I had three or four at the time and in August I said I'm going all in with snazzy silver I hired two people to help me I did like 22, 2300 in July. We did 15,500 in August um, because I had help and because I went all in, which the whole message probably in this video is focus. It's amazing when you focus on one thing uh, and go all in. And obviously hiring help, that really was a big, big help too. They were fulfilling all the orders. They were answering all the emails, doing all the customer support. And I could focus on the Facebook ads and scaling it. And I had a lot of problems, um, a mental thing, spending over $100 a day. I just, I was terrified of it. I thought if I spent $100 a day, the wheels were going to break off and everything was going to come crashing down and I couldn't do it. And then finally I did it mid-August of that year of 2015 and I did it and the craziest thing happened. I made more money. And so within 12 days of spending $100 for the first time a day, I was spending 400 bucks a day because I broke that mental barrier. It's the whole uh, Roger Bannister with the four-minute mile. Um, I did have some hurdles at the $500 a day mark. Same thing. It didn't take me as long to get over. I had the same hurdles at $1,000 a day. I had the same hurdles at $1,500 a day. Uh, I've never spent over, I think it was about seventeen, eighteen hundred. dollars 1800 I spent in... Uh, in a day on Facebook advertising. But with Shopify, Facebook lets you float the money. It's really easy to to really scale up really, really fast. That's the allure of the whole um, physical products, drop shipping, Shopify businesses, because you can really, it can, it can move quickly. Um, it was awesome. I ended up paying off a ton of debt. I paid off my car. I paid off student loans. Some student loans wiped out all my credit card debt. It was good, good times. So that was in 2015. Uh, I started, uh, was successful with that one. So then I, what did I say? Let's do more of them, you know? So I launched another store called Never Settle. Uh, I got the domain neversettle.co, not com. And it was like a t-shirt store. It failed miserably. Uh, it's still up. Actually, if you want to order a bracelet, neversettle.co. It's a buy one, get one. Or, uh, free plus shipping. I think it's $4 for shipping. I got, uh, they're not here, but I got like 300 or 400 of these bracelets. 
excuse me, downstairs. Again, it's a free plus shipping offer, never settled, .co. And then there's I Believe. Uh, I have Believe tattooed here. And I figured, well, m- some people aren't going to want to get a tattoo, so why not put it on the little bracelet? So I held on to that domain because I love it. I love the whole never settle. Uh, so I've held on to that domain, and I just did a free plus shipping offer probably about three months ago. Um, Two or three months ago. So that's still there. It wasn't like a full-fledged business. Some of these Shopify stores aren't full-fledged businesses. But uh, the next one, uh, this was last fall, Red Zone Rugs. Once again, I'm obsessed with alliteration. Uh, This was NFL and college football rugs. This was officially licensed rugs. I bought the store actually off of a guy up in, I think, Washington State. He was uh, a supplier. Not a supplier. He was a licensed manufacturer, some type of a supplier, but he had it in with the manufacturer who was out of Georgia, and I was obsessed. I, was, I got a nice custom website done, and I was uh, super excited about it. However, I didn't take into fact that shipping with rugs is extremely expensive, and shipping can just kill your business. The margins are razor they're razor thin with, uh, with that type of stuff. Uh, the rugs were like $109.00 to sell. I think I paid 79 for the rug. It was 20, I think to mail. No, it was about 95, 94, $95, $96. There was profit of about 12 to 15 bucks uh, on the lower, uh, that smaller rug. So, and that wasn't called, that wasn't, uh, uh, taking advertising into effect. So that like, if you're paying for advertising, that's going to eat into that $12, $15 profit. So um, I sold some rugs. I didn't break even on the business. I, I lost not a ton of money, um, maybe a thousand bucks, maybe. Um, I sold it on Flippa. Um, I pretty much got my money back for the store um, in the domain, basically. Um, but it, it was like I said, that's probably not a full-fledged business. It was more of a Shopify store. It was about a month long, six weeks I probably did it. Um, the next one was... Um, Another Shopify store. I found a, I'm a sucker for uh, two word domains, americasdeals.com. I thought that was a great domain. I still have that domain actually. And it was just kind of a general Shopify store w- looking for trending products to catch, uh, catch what a lot of these drop shippers do look for trending products. And like I said, the e-commerce thing, you can go really, really quick. Uh, did, did okay with it. Found some trending products that did okay, you know, but it was just, uh, I got, it wasn't long. It was probably about six weeks and I ended up, uh, I shut the store down. I, I wasn't having Having fun with it. It was uh, it was more of an idea. I didn't really like it. Again, not a full fledged business. This is more just a Shopify store. Uh, then the next one was similar. It was niched down. It was called Forever Fido. Again, alliteration and two word domains. I'm a sucker for. Um, that one actually did really well. I found a hot selling dog product that did really really well. Scaled it up really fast. This was earlier this year. Just a little like it was like a side side project. Um, I was sitting down on the couch one night uh, having a couple drinks. I don't drink anymore, but having a couple drinks, I saw this idea i ran upstairs literally built out a shopify store in like an hour and 15 minutes had a little bit of a buzz i woke up the next morning and i'm like you know what i'm gonna give it a try i spent an hour and a half doing this store and uh like the fifth day uh, of the ads being live i was at like 100 bucks a day by like the eighth day i think it was like 500 bucks a day scaled it really fast found out the product was kind of not the best type of product it wasn't um it was somewhat faulty um and so I pulled the plug on it. I just felt this guilt. Uh, I was making a lot of money, but I just felt guilty. It, it wasn't, it just didn't feel right. So I shut it all down. Um, probably got like six refund requests, maybe eight, probably sold over a hundred of them. So it wasn't like, it wasn't huge refund request, but I just didn't, I don't know. I didn't feel comfortable selling the product. So those are my eight business failures uh, over the last uh, like nine years. Like I said, uh, the biggest thing I said, like I said, is focus. A, a commitment, a focusing on one thing. A lot of these people talk about multiple streams of income. Uh, I, I'm not one of those people. I'm against that. When getting started, uh, a lot of MLM people. Um, oh, and by the way, none of these things were MLM. I cannot stand that shit. You'll never see me promoting one. You'll never get me in one. I don't care if you gave me a million dollars to go get started with one. I'm not doing the MLM. I just, I just don't like that industry. I've never been in it. Uh, I just think it's shady tactics. I don't need to hear your arguments. That's my opinion. You're not going to change it. Um, Focus on one thing. Um, I I talked about this before. Um, Warren Buffett and Steve Jobs years ago, they credit their success to one word and it was focus. Both of them said it. Um, So focusing on one thing, again, that takes away the multiple streams of income. Now, if you have a business going and you have a team going or you have it 
I don't know, 80% automated, 90% automated, then look into starting a second business or a second stream of income. But these yahoos out there with seven uh, seven streams of income, most of it are trickles of income, you know, 10, 20, maybe $100 uh, from this trickle, uh, $50 from this trickle, $68 from this trickle, you know, 350 from this trickle, you know. I'm just against it. I just, I'm, I'm with Warren Buffett and Steve Jobs, or Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. Focus on one thing. Uh, be committed. Um, I talk to a lot of people. Uh, I ask them to give me 90 days with uh, um, um, a business model. 90 days, uh, pretty much any business model online. It works if you fucking work it. Uh, I can almost guarantee it. Uh, but most people have unrealistic expectations and give up way too way too quickly. They throw in the towel because they're not successful after like day four. Um, give it 90 days. I'm not saying you're going to be retired on the beach drinking a drink, a drinking a, a strawberry daiquiri. Retired with your laptop. However, you will be making traction. You'll be making, uh, you'll be, you should be building momentum after 90 days. And when you build momentum, you build confidence. And when that happens, it literally is a freight train going, uh, again, if you're focused on one thing and you're going in one direction. So that's where it's really powerful. Um, and then the third one, uh, I didn't script any of this video. This is literally one take. I, all I have is my eight failures down on a piece of paper. I was watching some football. I came upstairs. I'm like, I'm just going to do this video. No, 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 nothing, you know, besides the, the, I wanted to go over each of them. Um, the, so I didn't have that, these three lessons either. Have fun. That's probably the most important thing. Uh, I've done some business models where I chased the money. Uh, the snazzy silver one, I chased the money. I had a lot of fun with it. I did a video I'll post up here years ago. Um, I, I had fun with it. I made a lot of money. I took my dad to the masters. I paid off a ton of debt. Like I said, after like 14 months, like that money high, because they had to have a high, it wore off of me. Like I was like, this isn't what God put me on this earth to do. You know, I just, I shut it down in August of 2016. Uh, it was, I probably could have sold it for mid five figures, if not close to six figures. Uh, the story, it did a lot of money. Um, and I just, I had, a, like I said, I had a ton of inventory. I was using a fulfillment center in Idaho. You know, I wasn't drop shipping anymore, but I just hit a wall and uh, I watched a couple of videos and a couple of things popped up and uh, I just hit a wall and I, sh- I shut it down. So, cause I wasn't having fun, um, made it a lot of money, but I was miserable, you know? So take that into factor, have fun with it. Um, I'm more of like having like the purpose and fulfillment. Some people like chasing the money and the money makes them happy. That's fine. That's, I'm not here to judge or anything like that. Find what makes you happy though. But like I said, make sure to have fun with it. I do these videos. I have an absolute blast with the videos with some of my, uh, with like the tweets that I put out. Um, it's taken me a long time to kind of just let it all out. Like your weirdness. That's, that's the good part about it. That's, that's, don't hide that. You know, for years, I'd hide the weirdness or the swearing. You know, I wouldn't swear because people didn't like that. Oh, they might not do business with you because you swear. It's like, I fucking swear. <laughs> if you don't like it, then don't watch my videos, you know, or don't hire me to do something, you know. Uh, but what you see is what you get type of thing. So that's the main thing is have fun. But focus, commitment, and have fun with it. Those are the three lessons. Looking back after nine years, if I sat down and jotted things down, I could probably come up with 27 more. But uh, I wanted to do this literally fresh off the fresh off the dome. This is literally one take, probably my first video from front to back. So, hey, if you like these types of videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that little bell notification. I drop videos every Monday and Thursday for your viewing pleasure. As always, if you have comments, questions, or concerns, please post them down in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them. If I can't answer them, I'll try to point you in the right direction or find someone that maybe can help you answer that question. Once again, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it.